Well, we're back. It's Friday. Everybody's doing happy dances out there about it being Friday, except us, because it's really our kind of our Saturday. Isn't it? Yeah, I don't even know anymore. Yeah, it's such a it is a weird rhythm to be in a, a, a pastor sometimes because you, you're always out of step a little bit with what most people are doing. But here we are. It's Friday. So chapter 10, verse 32, again from yesterday, we're now, we're making the move to Jerusalem. Uh, chapter 10, verse 32, they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was walking ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. He took the twelve aside again and began to tell them what was to happen, saying, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. Then we'll hand him over to the Gentiles. They'll mock him, spit upon him, flog him, and kill him. And after three days, rise again. So this is the second time that Jesus has used these words with the disciples. The first one was up in Caesarea Philippi. And they still have no reference point. They still have no understanding of what does this mean. Well, going back to the little children coming into the kingdom, they have less to unlearn. Evidently, the disciples haven't unlearned what their concept of a Messiah is. They're still caught up in that idea of a triumphal military-type leader who's going to come in and conquer politically uh, and establish a more of a of a this world rule in the here and now. So, so, for example, when Jesus does enter into Jerusalem, they shout "Hosanna to the Son of David." Uh, again, David is kind of that uh, person that they think the Messiah will emulate, being a political, military ruler, but also certainly David uh, initiated reforms and, and was a man after God's own heart. He was somebody that uh, was said to to actually love God with, with all of his heart. So uh, they were looking for another David. Mm-hmm. And Jesus says, no, that's not who you got. You've got the suffering Messiah. And he is, um, he's so clear with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a Brene Brown in her work. I I love Brene Brown. She she has a term that her team uses as clear as kind. Mm. So he's being clear with them what the expectations are. This is what's going to happen. He's trying to set their expectations so that they can appropriately respond but yet they seem to go in the other direction because right after Jesus tells them what he personally must go through, he gets these two jokers, <laughs> James and John. Again, so many times I feel like I, I, I feel some, some strange sense of vindication because I, I obviously don't always get it right, but they didn't either. <laughs> not only did they not get it right, they got it. They majored in getting it wrong. Yeah. So they they want to be vice president and secretary of state in the new cabinet that Jesus is getting ready to inaugurate in their mind. They, so they want an exalted place. Say, hey, hey, Jesus, we want to ask you something. I want to be on your right side. Brother here wants to be on your left. In other words, we we got you, and we're here, and we're ready to rule. And, and recognize that they're zealots. We think James and John are part of that. Uh, group that really has all along wanted to rise up militarily against Rome, kick Rome out, and uh, so they're they're already they're already ready to fight. Well, remember, and this follows on the heels of whoever wants to be first must be last, whoever wants to be last must, whoever wants to be you know last will be first. So obviously they didn't really get that teaching, mm-hmm. and so Jesus asked them, "Well, are you sure you know what you're asking for? Are you sure you want to come with me?" Because guess what? Are you able to be baptized with what I'm baptized with? Are you able to drink the cup that I can drink? And they're like, uh, yeah, yeah, we're good. That old song we used to sing, I don't know if you remember, Are You Able, Said the Master. Do you remember that one? Do you know, I've got a story about that. Do you? So see. I was a um, chaplain, Carolina's Medical Center, many years ago. And I think that's before you and I knew each other very well. And I had a church I served quarter time in Richfield. And so they're about... 15 people showed up every Ooh, Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, big crowd. I preached it down to 13 by the time <laughs> I left. And um, we had a, a young man playing the piano who only knew two hymns. Mm. Are Ye Able was one of them. So, so we sang it almost well. every Sunday. So uh, I, I haven't had, and that's been 20 uh, some years ago, and I haven't had that hymn played since. You kind of had enough of that. So one, yeah, huh? so please, I, if I twitch a little when you get into Are You Able, <laughs> now you know. Evidently, I'm not. Yeah, no, no, not able to hear that one no, anymore. No. 
So we're uh, as we make our way, Jesus then begins to kind of unpack for the other disciples that this is what it means for me to go and die, and this is what it means for you for, to be with me. Uh, the ten heard this. They're, they're angry with James and John. I, I don't know why they're so angry with James and John, because they all want the same yeah. thing. They're, they're all they're, wishing that they maybe they can beat all, them to the punch. Which shows they're jealous. They're, they're not, they don't get what Jesus says either. Yeah, they're all vying for positions of importance in this new administration. So Jesus calls them together. This is uh, 1042. So Jesus calls them and says, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lorded over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So we can't even begin to comprehend how radical this teaching is. In their understanding of rulers and leaders, the, 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 they had absolute authority. Mm-hmm. And they had tons of servants. They had people who would taste their wine to make sure it wasn't poison. They had people who would tend to their every need. Um, the idea that a ruler would do anything that was even had a hint of being subservient to someone else that was it's impossible mm-hmm. right so yet but here Jesus is saying I'm the Lord of the universe and that's who we understand him to be and he said I didn't come to Lord that over you I didn't come to get you to carry my luggage yeah John John makes the gospel of John makes the point has Jesus washes the disciples feet right before there's so many different places we see this well, we exemplified see, and in we the see scriptures. that in the, in the Philippians in mm-hmm. the what we call the Christ hymn the yeah. what's called a kenosis uh, the idea that God pours himself out for our sake that an emptying that Jesus gives up the heights of the kingdom of heaven yeah Jesus I didn't come here to be you know to for you to do for me uh, and he has every right to do that by the way no I came to serve and to give up my very life for your sake. This is this is such critical teaching. I, I don't really know that we make enough about this in, in the in the church. You know, in our society today, politically and otherwise, it, it really does feel like that uh, we are missing that deep sense of, of love and service to one another. That yeah. the, the It's not about what can I do for someone else, it's about what can I get done for me. Yeah. And and I think that's uh that's a critical, you know, when you think about people driving and, and just how hard and you know, angry we get with one another, all of the different things. Um, and, and yet, I want you to recognize this is not weakness. We often mistake and think that this idea of service to others is a sign of weakness. I think it's an incredible sign of strength when you can offer yourself to, to others um, Giving, giving up your own wishes, desires, oftentimes, in order so that so that others may be may be well. Yeah, yeah. That that's the Christ-like. We we use that word a lot, mm-hmm. but then we don't often follow through with what it actually means. But to be Christ-like means to put yourself in a position where you are there to serve other people. Mm-hmm. Um, again, not something that jobs very well with how we understand the world to work. And that's part of what makes it so revolutionary. Mm-hmm. How much time we got today? We got time for blind bar man. So should that be tomorrow? We got one minute. Right. So well, that, that would be Monday. Let's or introduce Wednesday. next Wednesday. Yeah, next Wednesday. Let's introduce blind bar to Um Bar uh, always means son, so son of Timaeus. This is this is maybe is is one of a, the great stories that um, I, I love. This story in the Gospel of Mark for me speaks so much. We look forward to getting into it. Read ahead and let's make a connection about blind Bartimaeus next week. Thank you so much for joining us. Verse 46 to the end. Yeah. Look forward to seeing you.